Okay, very good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Wednesday, 25th of November. Um, I had most of the day off yesterday, away from the desk, and uh, unsurprisingly then, we, we, we hit the 30,000 when I'm not around. Uh, but it's okay, I can, I can live with that. Uh, but hopefully the, the briefing yesterday was helpful because a lot of the kind of positivity we were talking about and the kind of three elements of um, the Biden transition coming into effect with the Yellen nomination from the president-elect uh, for the position of US Treasury Secretary and then ongoing with some of the COVID developments with the vaccine from Astra at the beginning of the week. We're all positive catalysts, so the kind of simultaneous nature of these things all happening at once with technical breaches on some key levels such as like within oil from that break of the late August high just saw moves really start to accelerate and much of this morning really is uh, the, the kind of morning after the day before uh, and I say that because it's slightly reminiscent of a, of a hangover it's the idea then that if you're particularly new to financial markets now of not now doing something inappropriate Often what you can see with new traders is they come into a day post yesterday when there's kind of nice more uniformity to, to market movement and correlations uh, and they just start approaching it like we're going to have a, a complete repeat of the type of moves we had yesterday, which more often than not usually is not necessarily the case because market prices obviously move. They factor in now the new kind of what's priced in for the events that, or the catalyst that created that movement in the first place. So unless something more meaningful now develops, uh, it could be you either see consolidation or in fact, perhaps even a little bit of a pullback then for a, the continuation of the trend that was materializing. So really just having a look at the charts here, um, equity index futures, in terms of the overnight Asia Pacific for, uh, performance, it kind of followed on from the higher close on Wall Street, gains ranging from around 1.5 to 1.6% across the three major US indices. Uh, the futures then, the, the Dow well and over and above the, the 30,000 level, 30,165 in fact, the high print uh, that was seen in the futures market at least, that was in the overnight Asia Pacific session. And then we've just faded the move slightly before we've consolidated now going into the European Open. Uh, the Dow, as that future is still positive, the, the S&P uh, marginally so by around six points. Uh, the 10 years pretty flat for the moment uh, just looking at gold obviously that's been quite the focal point of this week just given the uh, renewed breakdown of what we've had in price given the breakthrough the relative consolidation that we had had uh, from the initial first vaccine Pfizer low that was on the 9th of uh, November and then around the retest we had back on the 19th and uh, the breakdown we had at the beginning of the week then just keeping gold heavy uh, for the time being and now just looking at that $1,800 level you can see right down here in the bottom uh, corner uh, any type of bounce and retracement would be looking at uh, some quite interesting levels which would be around a recovery up to uh, 1809 spot 6 in the futures which was the uh, high that was seen in the overnight session before the push down to then the retest which is the range uh, of uh, overnight which was yesterday's low uh, any further recovery from that point, then looking around 18 spot 8, which would be the low and the eventual break uh, from Tuesday session, and then above there, same kind of pattern. Uh, the big move that we had on Monday, the floor of that with the eventual break, which saw some quite heavy follow through, then for the recovery, uh, and then the kind of classic short moving, moving price action back down lower, and that would be around 1828. Um, so that's how I'd be looking at things on any type of upside recovery some good areas of resistance here using the the pattern from uh, the kind of descent in price and if we look on the daily um, there's the one area which a lot of people were, were looking at um, which seemed quite a long way off but actually having moved now uh, a decent amount of 150 bucks in in gold in a very short period of time and you can see that breakdown in price now just more evident of where we were trading back down to around the consolidation of july in the summer uh, that coming in with the low end of that range, as this is a lot of what we were talking about yesterday, uh, coinciding with that 200 DMA blue line, which is around 1795 or so. And that's where the, the market found some support, both yesterday and also in the overnight session. So that's a key area now um, that may well hold for the time being, just given the, the scope of the move seen thus far, wouldn't be unusual to see perhaps 
uh, a little bit of a, a range forming now from around this 95 up to around 18, 19 and a half, 20, which was basically a reflection of that July range that we were trading in. So that's the, the gold market. The oil market was, was certainly quite interesting um, yesterday because we had on a daily chart, we were very much so yesterday talking about keeping an eye on that late August um, high, which was the recovery from the pandemic movement that we've seen uh, since the course of this year. Uh, and the break above that level just saw a real acceleration of the price, not only the summer high, but also that March 2nd low point, which was quite key as well, going back um, prior to really the, the pandemic kicking in. Uh, and the breakthrough of that saw a, a quick acceleration straight up through 45 bucks in the futures, which was our kind of target on any breach of these levels. And I know a number of the guys in Amplify Live got a hold of that. So absolutely well done uh, on the back of that move. Um, here now then, where we're looking at is uh, 45.72 is the overnight high in the futures, but around there starts to encapsulate the low that we had on the 5th of March and also the 27th of Feb, kind of around here. Uh, it'll be quite key, but any more firm definitive break and a continuation of these moves, um, then really there's not a great deal more. Um, wouldn't be surprised if people would feel quite a bit more bullish here for a continuation on a push higher. But perhaps more importantly, I'd say for the rest of this week, we've probably got now a, a decent level of support that will come in uh, on that same level that was restricting price, which will now be a floor for price uh, over the course of the next coming sessions is how I'd see it. Um, and then in the equity market, uh, just having a look in the, well, let's have a look at the S&P quickly and then we'll look at the Dow and then we'll go over some of the headlines. So here is the S&P and I've just marked it up with uh, this and the Dow with an area with a colored rectangle of uh, probably an area that I'd be keeping a fairly close eye on today. Let me just remove my, my camera so you can see the actual chart a bit more clearly. Um, so this encapsulates then uh, the kind of overall moves that we've had going back to the beginning of the month. That was that Pfizer spike that we had, which was the most kind of prevalent given that was the first time that breaking news came out. Uh, we've had those other moments, the Moderna kind of high uh, and so on. And so just looking where we are at the moment, um, this kind of goes in step with much of my overall uh, view about where we might go from from here, which is, I don't think it would be um, that unusual to see a bit of profit taking. We've kind of seen that emerge in the overnight session, a bit of Asia follow through, then fatigue setting in. I think if we did get back down lower though, uh, interesting area around 36, kind of 20, which was the, the previous top of the price action on the 17th and 18th. And then you've got the pivot residing just below at around 17, three quarters and 18. So uh, that could be quite an interesting area for a pullback for the longs uh, looking to follow then this move back up and then just using the framework of this current price action uh, to kind of manage that position on the, the expectation then that we continue to just push one up, uh, not back just to the overnight highs, but to the eventual high that was seen back on the 9th. So kind of similar case with the uh, the Dow. So again, my idea here being that um, I prefer the long positioning, but now it's just about being disciplined to wait for the most optimal um, entry point uh, and just jumping in getting long at this point I don't think it's probably the most astute play uh, I prefer here again looking at the Dow uh, we've got the pivot level which was around 29 um, 890 which was that previous resistance you can see on the 16th 18th 24th before the break came also came back down close to that level before the push up that we saw um, yesterday which was in the late US session so Kind of like that area, if it comes back down there, um, it could be quite interesting. On the downside, any breach of that, then the potential for a deeper move back down to correct below 29,800. Uh, and then obviously in any longs, just looking to come back up towards um, some of the highs that were seen initially uh, in the US session and then up to the overnight session high. Uh, but again, I only really like it if it comes back down to around basically what would be uh, the pivot level.
Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it from an overall summary. I mean, the, the actual news flow I'll talk you through now, it's very light, in fact. Um, I think one of the main important things to, to also take away from yesterday's move and then also to apply to today's mentality is that the COVID situation is still um, progressively worsening in America. I mean, the latest that I saw last night was California yesterday reported its second biggest jump in coronavirus cases uh, on record, logging more than 15,000 new infections for the second time in four days. So this, of course, as well comes with um, U.S. traders will probably look to head for the exit early today. That's normal procedure ahead of Thanksgiving where all U.S. major markets are closed on Thursday. There's normally short nails on Friday, but most traders will then take it an extended period off and not return until till the following Monday. So uh, in terms of today's market session, I'd say perhaps then volume wise and consequently any types of uh, movement might be quite early into the um, UK afternoon uh, and then things might start to quieten out as we go further in towards the Wall Street close. Um, but the other thing is then that a point I wanted to make was about COVID, although it's getting worse in the in the US, you know, I think you've got to trade what you see and at the moment the combination of multiple fundamental forces all coalescing in a positive way with some technical key breaches of long-term levels that caused uh, price to kind of be exacerbated on the move to, uh, to the upside. Uh, I think that was just trading what you see really and not overthinking it. Uh, certainly, I think the COVID situation will come back. It's very unusual for the market to remain in this kind of uh, period of hysteria for long. Now that we've achieved 30,000, um, the next kind of meaningful uh, area on the upside then is what? 31,000 or 35,000 uh, and that's still a way to go and in that period of time uh, obviously things like Thanksgiving the the tangible effect of that as a potential super spreader event will probably become known in the next 10 to 14 days uh, and so that I think will be quite an interesting pivot point and if that puts us back into mid-December and given the extremity of the equity outperformance that we've seen, particularly just coming in post Biden and, and the election victory, um, then any large kind of sizable uh, portfolio rebalancing that might take place by some of the bigger players in the market as we go in towards the end of the year uh, could be something just interesting to think about. But again, you've got to think about timing. On a day trading environment, it's always important to you know, just go with the flow to a certain extent and be away with, uh, be aware of what's going on fundamentally. Um, but then um, timing is quite key. You can be bearish on COVID, but still be buying this market because timing wise, the bearishness of COVID might not materialize for another couple of weeks as yet, uh, is one I'm kind of alluding to. Um, so yeah, that, that that's my overall take at the moment. So, um, you know, no, no, need to, to be rushing in today and you know just try to reset mentally and then just go at it again so yeah a couple of headlines to, to update you on we do have the uk spending review uh, happening today this is rishi sunak obviously the chancellor and he'll set out a 4.3 billion uh, pound plan to tackle the threat of mass unemployment the obr the office of budget responsibility forecasts are expected to show much higher unemployment and unsustainable public finances. Uh, I guess something that's more interesting here uh, that we tend to see and a couple of nuances here is the fact that the spending review is, is being fairly short dated. Normally uh, we'd have a budget and that would outline for multiple years but given the lack of clarity and the fluidity of the situation with COVID um, we're talking about kind of more short term 12 month outlooks of what the government intends to do. Uh, the bit that's normally more market moving, uh, and this is really more typical for if you are trading UK fixed income, so gilt, um, is the type of issuance that comes out of the DMO, the Debt Management Office. Now, the DMO is set to announce today almost £100 billion of extra issuance between December and March. Uh, so again, you've got to, the government's got to raise money in order to pay for the phenomenal amount of, uh, of spending that it's doing at the moment. This takes the full fiscal year amount to £482.8 billion, pounds, as you can see on this graphic here. And according to a median estimate, um, that figure, according to a median estimate of 12 primary gilt dealers, 
Uh, that, of course, as you can see here, is more than twice the previous record we had in the financial crisis. So again, to put the pandemic into a bit of context, the amount of government spending that's been adopted by the UK to deal with the pandemic, and so the subsequent amount of issuance that the Debt Management Office for the UK have had to, had to conduct is twice the amount of what we had during the, the kind of GFC. So quite, quite incredible, really. Um, but from an overall take, if you're trading sterling, uh, even the FTSE, things like that, I would, typically the spending review doesn't really create too much in the way of a market reaction. The other thing, of course, is that a lot of this has been well telegraphed in the press. You can pretty much get the full entire breakdown already, even with articles like this on, on Bloomberg, of exactly what it is that he's going to be saying, what he's going to be outlining, all these types of things. So it comes as very little surprise. Nonetheless, he begins at 12.30. Um, the other thing we've had overnight is some oil inventory data. Um, in terms of oil, it, it's backed off a little bit in the overnight. So again, looking at the structure of price away from that longer time frame on the daily chart, looking at the more intraday perspective, uh, just marked up this rectangle, uh, solid area of support here. You've got the 45 handle, the cap on the initial rally into the US Open, and then the overnight bounce that we've had in the Asia Pacific session on the, the break that came early on. So you've got a nice kind of framework to work with here. You've got the R1 on the upside of the high. You've got that nice area of support on the low. So probably just waiting here now for the DOE numbers to hit a bit later on to see where we go. On that point then, you had the APIs last night. Uh, and as I said, the, the market did actually move considerably higher overnight when Asia Pacific session begun. So largely a lot of the API numbers are just brushed aside to some respect, but just so you're aware, uh, ahead of the figures later, the headline bill was 3.8 million, quite considerably large and expected draw of 300,000. Cushing draw 1.4 million, um, so notable Cushing drawdown um, as opposed to then the bill that we have in the headline. Gasoline bill 1.3, distillates draw of 1.8 million. That leads us then on to um, what have we got for the session ahead? So the ECB Financial Stability Re Review and Rishi Sunak's um, spending review, I don't think are going to be particularly that interesting, to be quite honest with you. So it's going to be more of a US-centric session. And, and given the fact that we've got Thanksgiving, uh, basically North America or, or the US have crammed in all of their data releases into one afternoon. So what typically would be things we'd see on a Friday, like University of Michigan, for example, is actually going to be coming out today. So note that today at 1.30, you get durable goods, you get the second preliminary reading of US GDP uh, for Q3, you also get the core PCE numbers, uh, you also get initial jobless claims, personal income, uh, you've got core PCE, University of Michigan, new home sales, and the DOE oil infantry is coming out, as well as the FFC minutes uh, later on, of course, this evening. So a heck of a lot coming out, uh, in fact. So... Uh, again, I think it will be a US kind of based session in terms of um, what we're looking out for uh, in regard to a more definitive market direction. Uh, and then just looking and playing with these charts then from a more of a technical structure standpoint, looking at um, keeping an eye on the dollar, we're still at this precarious kind of long term level support. So there is still that potentiality of a further destruction, if you like, of the dollar in the short term environment. Uh, and those major currency pairs in euro dollar and cable are still trading quite close to some key um, higher uh, levels on the upside so again just quick look on those charts if i look at cable here uh, you've got a little bit of creeping up here as uh, uk european players come in and then you've got that 134 handle which is quite a nice level on the upside which coincides with the r1 which was the high that we had on monday's session uh, with some of the renewed dollar weakness and then just looking at euro dollar, um, you've got the R1 just acting as a support this morning. And just above there, you've got an area of the, the Pfizer spike high that came uh, on the 9th, which is up at 119.29 and a half. Uh, again, I've marked up this rectangle uh, as a key area of interest, uh, quite a, a significant both directions, both resistance through the mid part of the month, uh, and then a support area in 
uh, the overnight session to see this latest bounce that we've had. So be looking at that to hold up as a floor for price for the moment, it will be quite key. Um, on the COVID front, obviously in the US, or in, the, in Europe, excuse me, Italy on Tuesday did report the highest number of COVID deaths in a single day since the end of March. But countries like France then, as expected, Macron came out and outlined a phased and cautious reopening of the economy in a stepstone approach starting from Saturday. Uh, the UK PM said the four nations of the UK will have agreed to relax COVID-19 restrictions for Christmas to allow three households to meet for up to five uh, days. So uh, again, the, the perception of dollar weakness really emanating from the factors that really drove price yesterday. Obviously, Janet Yellen is quite a key one for me, really, um, given the fact that she'll be closely aligned um, with working with the Fed uh, in a cooperative way rather than in conflict during the Trump administration, Mnuchin era, uh, and also her disposition for erring on the side of being cautious and gradual, i.e. dovish, um, helps play out with that idea then that without any forthcoming stimulus factors coming in, uh, people will be of this mindset of lower for longer mantra that will help support um, general market sentiment, equity valuations, but also um, put more downside pressure on the dollar. So keen to watch that. And if that does materialize, then uh, be keeping an eye as well, furthermore on those commodity prices in oil and gold. Um, final thing is if you are already on Amplify Live or if you're not, um, do feel free to check it out. Um, if you just go, I'll put a link to this if you're watching this on YouTube, but uh, amplify-trading.learnwells.com is our kind of portal, our trader hub. Um, the reason why I'm pointing this out is not only do we have live streaming throughout the day, but we host every Wednesday evening what we call a masterclass where we get um, our internal senior traders to go over some of their specialisms uh, in a kind of interactive uh, format in a pr private webinar. Uh, but we also get industry speakers and tonight um, I'm quite pleased to say we've got Nick Baker um, who co-founded the world's leading asset and wealth management consultancy firm. Um, he now works in a variety of different roles um, and one of those being he's our non-executive chairman here at Amplified Trading but he's also just got some really great um, experience about a number of different things so really looking forward to having a chat with him later on tonight. Uh, on Amplify Live. So if you want to join us, just, just check out the link in the, the description. Okay, guys, that is it. Going to wish you a good day ahead. And uh, I'll see you in the live chat room. Thanks very much.